Hello and welcome. We are the Long Distance Trail Crew. We are volunteers who devote our time and energy largely to long distance hiking trails, namely the Appalachian Trail, the New York Long Path, the Highlands Trail, and the Schwalgonk Ridge Trail. As an experienced crew, we take on projects involving multiple materials and unusual complexity. So, why do we do it? Well, we enjoy nature and the outdoors. We have a desire to learn new skills. We want to help build safe and enjoyable trails by controlling water and wear and tear. And most importantly, we enjoy working with a congenial group of like-minded volunteers. We will be building safe and sustainable trails by controlling wear and tear, using crib walls and drainage, steps and stepping stones, and reinforced treadway. I want to talk about steps. On the following five pages, I'll show you a variety of steps built by the Long Distance Trail Crew. Shown here is the Appalachian Trail at Beachy Bottom Road, with a before and after view. It's quite a difference. Here is a before and after shot of the new steps we built on the Appalachian Trail at Greenwood Mine. Now it's a much more enjoyable hiking experience. Here you see the before and after view of the New York Long Path on Hook Mountain near Landing Road. It's an amazing transformation. Here is an unusual set of steps on the Appalachian Trail near Greenwood Lake. In the before shot, hikers had to use the aluminum ladder to continue on the trail. Not a great hiking experience. In the after shot, you see that the bent steel rebar steps were epoxied into drilled holes on the rock face. Now finish, these steps offer a unique Appalachian Trail experience. Another set of unusual steps were built on the Appalachian Trail on the southwest corner of Bear Mountain. In this unusual project, first we had to find rocks that were the right shape needed for a step. Then we drilled corresponding holes into the rock face and the rock step. After the holes were drilled, we used epoxy to hold the rebar pins in place. Then delicately, we placed the rebar pins into the pre-drilled steps. At the top, we installed a rebar handle to assist hikers climbing up or down the steps. Looking at the finished project, this set of steps are unique and look amazing. And finally, the steps at Nyack Beach. The before shot shows what happens when stone steps are left unmaintained for too many years. After LDTC was finished, the new stone steps are sustainable and will last for many years to come. Now I want to talk about treadway. Isn't treadway just the dirt under your feet? But wait a minute, it's not quite that simple. This is treadway under construction and finished. In the under construction photo, you can see that there is big crush and smaller crush before covering it all over with mineral soil. Crush is like gravel, only it's made by hand. Using big and small hammers, we crush big rocks into smaller and smaller pieces until we have the size we need. Crush is mainly used under treadway and under and around steps. Mineral soil is the dirt, usually brown or yellow, that is below the top layer of organic material. In some places, the organic top layer is over a foot deep, so we have to dig deep holes to get to the good stuff. Here's another great example of treadway under construction. Terry is making crush, then topping it off with mineral soil. Now we have a finished trail. Crib walls. Crib walls hold up the trail while traversing slopes and permit the construction of switchbacks. Here are two great examples of LDTC's crib walls. These sturdy crib walls allow the trail to go across a steep hillside. Two more examples of crib walls supporting the trail. Crib wall complete, now build the treadway, crush, more crush, then top it all off with mineral soil. Now I want to discuss drainage. Why drainage? 
because water flowing down or across the trail will erode and ruin the treadway. One of the best ways to control water is to use water bars to divert water off the trail. And here are a few great examples. Now here's an unusual problem. We have water running across the trail, but no way to divert it. And bedrock was just a few inches below the surface. Our solution? Lift the treadway above the saturated soil with crush. Then add stepping stones. We call this method turnpiking. Here are two more examples of turnpiking. They are both on the New York Long Path, just about 70 miles apart. Another problem area, the trail runs through a swampy area. What can we do? And our solution to that problem is to install bog bridging. That is what the finished project looked like. Bog bridging is basically two side-by-side -side planks, we use black locusts, attached to two or three supports. For the supports, we use sections from the trunk of the black locust tree, we call these rounds, and we strip off the bark to make them last longer. Then we set them into a slight depression lined with crush. Level everything up, and now let's go hiking. A different problem is the trail crosses water, but it's too deep or fast moving. What's the solution? This was the issue on the Appalachian Trail near Beachy Bottom Road. We had a milled lumber bridge collapse. It had to be replaced. So our crew built a new one. On the 1779 trail, another milled lumber footbridge was damaged by a falling tree. So, with the help from the West Hudson crew, it was rebuilt. This next one was an unusual project for us. It was the rehab of an 1839 stone bridge in Goose Pond Mountain State Park. This was an all-season project, starting with form, design, then form building. This is arch one of four arches needed for this project. After all of the form pieces were in place and the rebar was installed, chinking was put between the bridge and the form to keep the cement from leaking into the stream. It was now ready for the pouring of the cement. By the next morning, the cement was dry so the forms came off. Only three more arches to go. We continued on, one arch at a time. When all four arches were completed, we focused our attention on the treadway. So to recap, this is the before, this is the after, and this is our crew. Great job, everyone. Okay, that's what we do. Now, how do we do it? Our tools. Boy, what a list. I'm not going to mention every tool. This is just a partial list of the tools we take in to every worksite. Our tools, how do they get to the worksite? Getting our tools to the worksite. Usually, our tools are carried in by our crew of volunteers. Some volunteers carry a little more than others. When it's quite a distance to our worksite, many times we will use game carts to help transport the heavy tools. Sometimes we do get lucky. The New York State Park Forest Rangers help out by carrying our tools up the mountain using a truck or a gator. Our tools. First up, minor mechanical advantage. Slings, ropes, and rock bars offer minor mechanical advantage. Feathers and wedges and shaping hammers offer additional minor mechanical advantage when shaping big rocks. Hoes, picks, and sledgehammers are basic examples of minor mechanical advantage and we use them every day. Let's not forget an important minor mechanical advantage, our ladders. Without our ladders, there'd be no high line. And no high line means we cannot lift big rocks. The number one major mechanical advantage we have is the grip hoist. This amazing device, along with the high line, raises and lowers big rocks. Additional major mechanical advantage is gained by use of the high line, a rope puller, 
our generator, rock drills, and the belay. Let's talk about safety. We are always safety first. It shows in our personal protection equipment, our training, and our teamwork. We demonstrate in order for teamwork to be successful, everyone has to work safely. On our crew, personal protection equipment means sturdy work boots, hard hat, safety glasses, gloves, and of course, hearing protection. Knee pads are optional. Training. We believe in and offer hands-on training. Our crew leaders and experienced crew will guide you through the use of all of our equipment. Volunteers are never left alone to figure it out for themselves. Training also includes many of our volunteers attend wilderness first aid training courses so we all can stay safe while out on the trail. And what is most important to LDTC? It's teamwork. Teamwork gets the job done. Teamwork, that's the magic ingredient. Teamwork is what it's all about. Whether you're pulling together to bring a rock closer or just part of the crew working on this old bridge and coming together to pour cement. It's teamwork that makes it happen. Teamwork also shows up at our end of day crew meeting where we discuss the day's activities, point out problems and solutions, and discuss what we want to accomplish on our next crew outing. Thank you for watching. We are the Long Distance Trail Crew. We rock your trail. Come on out and join in. You'll be glad you did. Visit us at longdistancetrailcrew.org. LDTC is a member of the New York, New Jersey Trail Conference.